Hey guys, I'm Andy. In this video, I'm going to open up a discussion that may take several videos to complete a series on. However, I want to discuss the movement capabilities of each vertebrae, whether it's uh, independent or a group, and kind of collectively come together on uh, what it means in the big picture. All right, guys, we're going to jump right into it. First off, I want to introduce you to the Ken Man. Uh, basically, this is the online 3D skeleton that I'm going to use for the series of these videos to basically help educate. Hopefully, you know, some of this is uh, going to go all the way back to those anatomy classes that a lot of you probably slept through. But nonetheless, let's uh, let's bring him in, right? Oh, Ken Man, where are you? Went back the wrong direction. There he is. Good. Okay. So let's orientate you to Mr. Ken Man here. Uh, so first off, again, like I said, it's a 3D model, so what I want you to understand is I can move it. Right? See his hip swing? That's cool. Right now I'm just going to set him right back to a neutral, close to neutral one. That's about as good as it's going to get. Right? Now you can see that the green line is almost completely vertical. The uh, purple line is not perfect, so let's see if we can make it a little better. And just like everybody, this is never going to be truly perfect, and we can, you know, oscillate some of this rotation. So to give you an idea of what these movements are, and first off, just to give you a clue, I have it set up on the L5S1 joint or the the, the lumbosacral joint, if you will. That's why it's highlighted blue. Uh, in this video, we're practically just going to cover the movements starting from the L1. As you can see, it highlights as I scroll down all the way down to here with some modifiable uh, postures too. So this is a typical skeleton, okay? Just to give you an idea. Uh, so what we're going to look at is what it takes to get into a seated posture and not necessarily the muscles in this video, maybe in another video when I use the muscles in motion, you just have to remember that the muscles are supporting joint movement. You know, without the muscles, the skeleton is just going to sit there and do nothing. Kind of like if you were in a casket for almost 50 years. All you are is the skeletal remains of your former self. The skeleton is not going to get up and start moving without magic, which does not exist. Okay, now that we've said that, let's uh, let's get into let's get into this. Okay, so the first thing I like to show is that we can rotate them left and right, right to left. I can go all the way through while I'm holding my cursor and it can keep rotating. Another thing is we can tilt them. It's pretty cool too, right? So we can get a superior look we get an inferior look. I can move the cursor up and down. So if we ever got to the point where we're talking about the foot or the tarsals, metatarsals, this is where we would be at. Uh, if we needed to zoom in on the skull, there we go. And speaking of the zoom, that's where distance comes into play, right? So we're just going to bring it on in. We're going to look at just kind of move it around so we get a cl closer look of the L1 through L5 plus the hip hip joints. Some of you are probably thinking, why am I collaborating on both the uh, the lumbar spine and the hips? Well, a lot of it has to do with going back into the musculature, where a lot of the muscles will start off of this uh, iliac spine and transcend upward, moving. The vertebrae, moving the L5 vertebrae, and some of it actually goes all the way up to the skull, but that's another topic. And then again, we look at the hips and we look what's right below them, right? You have your femur, uh, femur bones, which is adjoined by muscles that start here or here and attach down to here or outside here like this little TFL guy that likes to go out this way and cause a lot of uh, uh, IT band trauma or we spin this coccyx around you see this little space in between right here that's where uh, the piriformis runs laterally right so it goes this way 
and it pinches on that SI nerve known, uh, known to cause a lot of pain or radiating sharpness all the way down to your toes. So it's very important to understand the muscles that are being moved or used to move these joints even though we're not directly talking about having back pain up here. A lot of it's going to come from the fact that these muscles may be stronger than these muscles which will cause this hip to deviate downward thus pivoting this. So think of a steering wheel, right? You're not just going to, with both hands on the steering wheel should I say, you're not going to have one, the left hand is not going to pull down on the steering wheel without the right hand going up. So that's the, the basic concept that we need to realize when it comes to how the hips move and rotate and because they're lower than the vertebrae that's going to cause a lot of trauma to the vertebrae as we will next. Okay, so as we were talking about uh, being in a, uh, having some lower back pain, most of us like to sit down. Whether it's because our favorite show is on, we're eating, uh, our job details us to sit down because our desk requires us to, to sit in a chair. Regardless, this is where a lot of our pain is going to start coming from is essentially the way how we sit in our chair. Now, like I said earlier, I can rotate and I can tilt, which is cool, right? We like that. We like the ability to do some rotation stuff. So when we look at the anatomy and its ability to do that, whether or regardless of how I move this uh, skeleton around, the, the Ken Med, our spine can do that too. So let's move some of that, right? I already have the, the the sacrum selected. So let's say, you know what? Let me backtrack a little bit. Let's uh, let's let's put some distance between us and the Ken Man. Let me spin him. And so let's think about some basic stuff here, right? When you're sitting, you are flexing the hip. Right? Notice how that joint is articulating now. What does that say? 57? Alright, we'll do that. 57. Let's go. Let's do the same thing here. Probably 58.9. That's okay. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? It's close. Close enough. Close enough for government work. Let's go over here to the shoulder. I am the human performance guy for fighter pilots, so let's put this guy in a like position. So we're selecting the joint, we're going to flex the hand, it's gripping the, I still call it the joystick. We'll just keep it academic that way. And let's roll this guy over here. Right, this is pretty close to the throttle, but you know what? You can throttle up, throttle back, throttle up, throttle back. We'll just kind of do this, right? We'll put that arm out there. And now i got to select the, not the ulna, but the radius. Good job. And I can take out some rotation. There is the electronon process. Oh, there we go, the ulnar, yeah. All right, so we're relaxing some of that bicep. Now let's pronate the hand, there you go. Now you're grabbing the throttle. The right hand is now holding his joystick. And now this is almost where we would typically be in a seated position, right? So I wanna tilt a little bit so you get an idea. Now what I want to point out is something called the axis of rotation. Not just because I can spin the guy, but because the biomechanical or uh, uh, in physics you talk about axis of rotation as well on the degree where a joint basically closes itself off. It opens and it closes, just like a door. And so let me zoom in and enhance. Whoop. Now. We have a really good close-up shot starting from here again, the L1. Let's go all the way down to the, the joints that we're talking about. All right, so now our guy's in a somewhat seated position. Now we're going to see what happens to the rest of the body 
And then I'm gonna zoom out and show you guys something, right? That's pretty cool. All right, let's look at this. Let's go back to some of these. Now in a seated position, you're not gonna sit like this. It's highly improbable, it's not practical, and it's uncomfortable. So what the first thing is gonna happen is that this joint is gonna start flexing, okay? That seems more realistic. Now let's go over here, select the L5, and we're going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go ahead and put this guy in a seated position. Now, as I did that, I hope you were paying attention to this yellow line, but also this little space, this uh, intra vertebral, intra meaning between or middle of uh, two vertebrae, right? Intra vertebral space. So one of which, right, and we'll back this back off some, bring it back down to zero. You can see how much space there is between this part, the anterior surface of the L5 and the anterior inferior surface of the L4, right? There's a lot of space there. Now our body is designed to absorb pressure straight up and down with our spine like this, not off at a side. As you can see, this green arrow is at the moment. So again, here you can see I collect on the next vertebrae up. All right, so let's rotate this guy. Okay, so now our L5 can now support some ver uh, vertical pressure. Watch what happens here. All right, he goes from a zero position. Now that green line is starting to look like it's going back. This guy has got to flatten the spine out because he's sitting in a chair that's not truly ergonomic. This guy does the same. And make sure I select the L1. I did. Now let's move the T1 or T12 L1. Now this is a flat lumbar spine. So basically we have used our abdominal muscle to flatten our spine out to take that C shape or the, the lordotic curve out. Now, I said earlier, I wanted to zoom out so you could see something, okay? So I did not do anything to the hips and the legs, like as obviously, because I had it zoomed in. But as I zoom out, now look at where your legs are positioned. Now that doesn't seem too practical either, does it? Now let's reassociate some of these back into like a 30 degree. Do right. Oh, wrong one back down 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 and so now if we look at where your L5 is oh wow look at all this sliding right that that's a uh, definitely not vertical where we can absorb vertical pressure where we're sitting at right now not very healthy for the spine what's occurring there is you have really tight abs you may not even feel in the ab crunch but that that's uh, that's what's occurring there is your shortened space between the pelvis and the xiphoid process, this, you know, the, the anterior thorax brings the hips up, flattens the spine out, takes away the ability to absorb pressure. And what do we know about muscles, right? If they're sat in this position for longer than, I don't know, two minutes, that's when you start feeling that muscles are really set in. It makes it harder for you to get out of this position because of the, the muscles start feeling like it's relaxed and it feels like that's more of a natural position for it to be in. So when you stand up and that curve happens again, that hurts, right? So let's back this, right? Let's back it all out. Back, back, back it up. Back, 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 right? Go forward, go back, go forward, go back, go forward, go back. Show me what you're working with. All right, let's back it out. Yep, remember, like I said, we want to keep this academic. All right, another thing from this position, you know, go back and visualize how you were sitting just then. Lumbar flexion. Yeah, this is a, a real key component to having upper body pains. The other key component is this rotation. Now, you're not going to see a lot of it in the first, uh, first joint here, but let's say I go all the way down. Again, let's couple it with the vertebrae, let's go all the way down again. Let's couple it with this vertebrae, go all the way down. Now let's click on this. Now you see the direction of the arrows are now completely out of whack. Again, 
thinking of a wallet or a phone or something that you're sitting on here is causing your hip to shift and rotate. A, the same principle applies. After so long, those muscles will start getting uh, used to being in that posture, and so when you sit back up, ouch, 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 and that hurts. That's why you have back pain. So that's it for today, okay? Great. Uh, try to keep this uh, pretty much well intellectual, however, you know, I do realize I'm not speaking to other doctors with this. Uh, I hope that you found it educational for some things. This is just the first part of many. Um, with that being said, if you like the video, just hit the like like button. If not, you know, leave a comment. Tell me what else I could probably talk about. However, this is the first of many to come. I'm trying to keep the video short. You know, everybody has a life, so don't want to sit and watch a video for 45 minutes. It's not exactly the most humorous material either. So humorous, you know, not talking about the bone here. Um, but at the same time, it's stuff that needs to be covered for some fundamentals, especially the, you know, when we move forward into lumbar exercises or lower back pain mitigation, right? Again, I'm not a physical therapist, I'm an exercise physiologist. It's just something that I, you know, find myself knowing a lot more about than most others. Uh, did a lot of studying and research on it, and that's half the reason why I'm in the job that I'm in now. So, uh, with that being said, leave a comment. Leave a question and see you at the next video.